Hey, we have here on the board interesting integral from the MIT integration B 2016. Problem number two. We have the integral from 4 to minus 4, the absolute value of x cubed minus x dx. Okay, so looks pretty simple, but there's a few interesting parts, and the absolute value is going to be something we need to work around. So the first thing I want to do is just notice our whole expression here is going to be an even function. And the reason I know that is because this inner function, x cubed minus x, x cubed minus x is odd, and we have the composition of an even with an odd function, the result has to be even. But let's just show that so it's clear. So we start with our function f of x, which is the whole integral. And what we want to show is that if we have f of minus x, it's the same thing as f of x. So what we'll do is evaluate our f of minus x just by plugging in the minus x into our original function here and then simplifying it. So then when we cube out this, it's like just going to be minus x cubed. And then we distribute in the minus sign here, we're going to have a plus x. But then we can factor out a minus from this, and we have x cubed minus x. But then because it's all in an absolute value, we can just cancel that minus out and write it as absolute value of x cubed minus x. And that's the same thing as our f of x. So we've shown that this is an even function. And some people might ask, well, because there's an absolute value, can't we just jump to the conclusion that it's even right away? No, you can't because there's, first of all, like what if this was x to the fourth? If you look at a graph of x to the fourth, it doesn't have that symmetry. It doesn't work and the inner function is neither odd nor even. Um, so there's a bunch of, there's a lot of examples like that. So it's actually this odd function within an even function is where this works. And next, you might be wondering, why did we do that? Why do we even care that it's a even function? Well, we have this property here that when f of x is even, we can do this thing where we just double the integral, but our, we change our bound from a to zero. And we didn't have to do that, but I think it's going to make our evaluation a little simpler later on. Okay, so after all that, all we did was brought a two out front and changed our boundaries, but we still haven't addressed the absolute value. And I gotta confess, the first time I did this, I did it fast, and I just thought, well, our bounds are from zero to four, so this is always positive, so I can just remove the absolute value. But that's actually not the case. If we look at x cubed minus x when it's equal to zero, we can factor out an x, and this is x squared minus one. So this will have a few real solutions at zero, minus one, one. We're not interested in minus one because our bounds are zero to four. And so what we notice, the graph of this not with the absolute value, just this function x cubed minus x. It's going to look kind of something like that. That's pretty vague, but this point here is 1. So what happens is everything 1 and greater is going to be greater is going to be greater than 0, but everything between 0 and 1 is going to be negative. So what I'm going to do is break this integral up and we'll break our break it up on around this point at 1. And you can kind of notice just by inspection if you plug in anything here between 0 and 1, you're going to have this piece is going to be negative and this piece is going to be positive. So you're going to have to have a negative value in here. Okay, so now in order to remove our absolute value sign, we can break this integral up into two parts. We're going to evaluate from 4 to 1 and 1 to 0 to cover the full 4 to 0. So between 1 and 4, we could, put a, we could do like 4 right here. All these values are positive, so we can just drop the absolute value sign. And now we got an easy integral here that we know how to handle. And then between zero and one, we know we're always negative, so we can actually just reverse the sign and drop the absolute value. So we can write this as x minus x cubed. And from here, all we need to do is integrate and evaluate this thing. So for the first integral, okay, so power rule, it's gonna be x to the four over four minus x squared over two, evaluating from four to one. And then for our next piece, this integral, we're gonna have x squared over two, basically the same thing almost, over minus x to the fourth over four, and we're just gonna evaluate that from one to zero. All we need to do is plug in values and evaluate this. So, okay, so four in here is gonna be 64, and then four in here is gonna be minus eight. And then we need to do the other part, which is gonna be plugging in a one, is one fourth minus one half, and for the second part, 
our second integral is going to be 2 uh, plug in a 1 it's going to be 1 half minus 1 fourth we plug 0 in here we just get a 0 so I'm going to drop that now we just need to simplify some arithmetic so this piece right here that's going to be 1 fourth just evaluating in the parentheses and this one is going to be minus 1 fourth and this is 56 so let's see what happens when we multiply that out so 2 times 56 is going to be 112 um, minus times minus is a plus one so this is going to be a plus one half here and then here we have two times a fourth is another half that's just one and so for our final answer we are going to have 113. that's it mit 2016 problem number two thanks for watching please like and subscribe have a good day